Are you ready for a delicious serving of business success? We're taking a look at Olive Garden, the Italian-American sensation. From their savory breadsticks to their nationwide empire, there's a lot cooking here. Stay tuned as we uncover the financial ingredients that have cooked up Olive Garden's recipe for success. Welcome to the Finance for Choso channel, where we talk about all things finance. If you're seeking a daily dose of valuable information on money, business, investments, and savings, be sure to click the notification bell and hit the subscribe button now. In this video, we'll talk about why Olive Garden, one of the biggest chains of Italian and casual dining restaurants in the country, has become such a success. Let's dig in. Reason number one. Strong backing from big companies. The story begins with General Mills, a company known for Cheerios and Wheaties, among other things. In the 1960s, they were on a spree of acquiring different businesses, 37 of them in just one decade. They ventured into toys, fashion, and yes, restaurants. In 1970, they bought a chain of seafood restaurants called Red Lobster, which had been started by Bill Darden a few years earlier. This move was likely influenced by General Mills' rival, Pillsbury, buying Burger King in 1967. They also purchased a seafood brand called Gordon's in 1968. This interest in seafood prompted General Mills to dive into the restaurant industry. Over the next 12 years, they grew Red Lobster into a massive chain with over 300 locations. Seeing the success, they decided to create another restaurant concept. After a lot of research and investment, they opened the first Olive Garden in Florida. This was a test run to see what people liked. They made adjustments based on the feedback and opened a few more in the area. Now, remember, this was still General Mills, a big company with plenty of resources. When they saw the potential, they rapidly expanded Olive Garden across the nation, opening nearly 400 new locations in just eight years. This strategy had worked well for them with Red Lobster. They even tried it a third time with a Chinese food concept, but didn't find the same success. General Mills decided to focus more on their core products like cereals. So, they spun off their restaurant chain to do a separate company called Darden Restaurants, named after Bill Darden, the founder of Red Lobster. Even though Olive Garden was now under Darden Restaurants, they were still part of a huge corporation. When Darden Restaurants went public, its market value was a massive $1.8 billion, making it the second most valuable restaurant company on the stock market, only behind McDonald's. So the financial support from General Mills and later Darden Restaurants played a massive role in Olive Garden's success over the years. This backing gave them the resources they needed to grow and establish themselves as a major player in the restaurant industry. Before we talk about the other reasons behind Olive Garden's success, let's talk a bit more about Darden restaurants. This will give us a better understanding of the whole picture. In the early days, Darden faced some challenges. They even had to close some of their Red Lobster and Olive Garden locations. But the real tough times came about 10 years later. By 2009, Olive Garden had experienced more than 50 quarters of growth in sales. But this streak ended in the third quarter of that year. Red Lobster was also struggling. In the early 2010s, things were looking good for Darden as a whole. One of the main reasons behind this was the rise of fast casual restaurants. You know, those places that offer quicker and less expensive meals. Chains like Chipotle and Panera were growing rapidly, and they were taking away customers from Darden's restaurants. The turning point for Olive Garden and Darden seems to have been around 2014. Let me give you a simple number to show that. Their sales per location. It had been declining since 2010, but in 2014, it started going up again. Two significant events contributed to this shift. First, Darden sold Red Lobster. They realized that Olive Garden was becoming more important to them, so they used the $2.1 billion from the sale to pay off debts and invest in improving Olive Garden. The second thing that happened was an investor of Darden voiced concerns about the way the restaurants were being run and managed. 
This led to changes in leadership, including a new CEO, who implemented various changes to bring things back on track. They put a stronger focus on better service and training for employees. They also decided to raise their prices a bit to set themselves apart from the fast casual competition that had been causing problems. As I go on to explain the other reasons behind Olive Garden's success, you'll see how these changes played into its overall strategy. Reason number two, the never ending food idea. Here's another big reason for Olive Garden's success its never-ending food concept. Seriously, you won't believe how much food they give you. I mean, I usually end up feeling way too full. It's quite a feast. Right from the start, since their first test restaurant in 1982, they've been offering unlimited soup or salad and those famous breadsticks to their dine-in customers. In the beginning, they really focused on the salad. Their catchphrase was, good times, great salad, Olive Garden. You know what? Over time, those breadsticks kind of stole the spotlight, at least in my opinion. By the way, if you're trying those breadsticks for the first time, be cautious. It's easy to go overboard and fill up before even getting to the pasta. I've made that mistake myself. Reason number three, clever marketing and promotions. Here's another major reason for Olive Garden's success. It's smart marketing strategies. They've used promotions that really grab attention. One of the biggest hits is their never-ending pasta bowl. Back in 1995, they started a deal where you could eat endless pasta for just $6.95. Then in 2014, they took it up a notch with a never-ending pasta pass. For $100, you could enjoy unlimited pasta for the whole promotion period, usually around two months. It might sound gimmicky, especially since they only offer a limited number of passes, starting with 1,000 and then increasing to 24,000 by 2019. But here's the thing. They sell out in less than a minute. They even added a twist in 2019 by offering a lifetime pasta pass. The first 50 buyers of the regular pasta pass had a chance to pay an extra $400 for a lifetime pass. It's a bit crazy, but it gets people talking about Olive Garden. Now, let's talk about their famous slogan. You've probably heard it, when you're here, you're family. This slogan started in the late 1990s when they were facing challenges. They used it all the way until 2012 when they were going through another tough time. They changed it to, we're all family here. It's kind of saying the same thing in a simpler way. The original slogan had a nice ring to it and was quite well known. Changing it might have been an attempt to freshen things up during tough times. Interestingly, Olive Garden played around with its slogan's ownership. The president of Olive Garden appeared on Jimmy Fallon's show and gave Jimmy the rights to use the slogan. Although it was more of a licensing deal, it got people talking about Olive Garden. And in 2018, Jimmy handed those rights over to Post Malone on a show when they went to Olive Garden together. These little gimmicks are fun and effective at promoting the restaurant. Reason number four, creating a sense of authenticity. For the final reason, I'm going to talk about what I'll call perceived authenticity. You see, it turns out that Americans don't always crave true Italian cuisine. What they want is to feel like they're experiencing authentic Italian food, even if it's a bit different from the real thing. Let me explain. While I've never been to Italy, I'm pretty sure that what Olive Garden serves is quite distinct from what you'd find there. It's like a version adapted for the American palate. But Olive Garden puts in a lot of effort to make you believe it's the real deal. If you step into one of the restaurants, you'll see that they've gone to great lengths to create an authentic atmosphere. Their current building design, for example, was inspired by a farmhouse in Tuscany and was adopted in the late 1990s. Some of their ads talk about a culinary institute in Tuscany, where they send their top chefs for training every winter. Although some critics argue that these trips are more about sightseeing than actual learning, it doesn't really matter because it's all about creating a certain perception. In the early 2010s, they even introduced new dishes like the pasta keri, which was a made-up creation. It was unfamiliar to people, so they didn't perceive it as being authentic. However, 
As part of their turnaround strategy, they simplified their menu and got rid of these invented dishes, focusing more on traditional pasta offerings. I'm really curious to know what you all think about Olive Garden. Are you drawn in by those irresistible breadsticks and pasta bowls? I'd like to hear from the lucky ones who got the lifetime pasta passes too. Also, before you go, don't forget to like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.